guys, we're gonna start again. We were having some technical difficulties, which is totally okay. Thanks for joining me this Thursday instead of Friday. Um, I super appreciate uh, your willingness to change your day to watch me. We have a lot of free stuff going on at Fat Quarter Shop. We are launching next Tuesday our Merry Mini Stitch Along. The pattern will be downloadable in our free video or we're having a blog hop and you can go to a quilting life which is sherry mcconnell's blog and get it there week two will be on chelsea stratton's blog and so it's going to be like a blog hop so you can either get the pattern in our video or by going to our blogger site it's a super cute quilt you just need a layer cake one and a half yards background half a yard binding and two and a half yards bind backing now the quilt is only 33 and a half inch square so you can technically do less than two and a half you don't really need that much we just put that because some people like to have that true 10 inch around so we filmed this we're gonna have five videos every tuesday so the first four are blocks all the blocks are 12 inches and the last week is the finishing and it's a completely free pattern so i'm going to show you the back and since it's a mystery, you can't see it, but you can like get a little sneak peek. So this is my quilt. I'm actually going to be sending this to the quilter as soon as I get my backing and binding. So I got this done. And if you wanna know a time commitment, cause usually before I start a project, I kinda wanna know my time commitment. And when Lily and I filmed, it took about an hour, two and a half, hour and a half each block. That includes starting stopping filming so you could probably get these done in 30 or 45 minutes the blocks super easy and very beginner friendly and it doesn't have to be christmas fabric it's really cute in christmas fabric i used snow day by stacy itsu but basically we wanted it to be very generic so you didn't have to feel like you had to get a kit because everybody's got layer cake most people have background all that stuff already in your stash so this is just a way to like bust that stash and i'm super cute loving it our Sorry, real quick, we have a super chat from oh mr domestic oh my god for a dollar 99 he said Thank fat you. quarter shop is awesome sauce Thank confetti you. cannon we're gonna talk about your videos at the end look he made this it's so cute okay so we have our pineapple day which is also another free pattern with this we do have pineapple paper so you can't make it without the pineapple paper so these are the pineapple papers one is six inches and one is 12 inches it is a fat quarter shop product that we put together. It was in a so sampler box and we got a lot of calls to customer service and a lot of emails to our customer service email that they wanted this in a bigger pad. So we did the 12 inch and I'm gonna show you. We also, uh, Lily and I sewed along and then we had 11 bloggers who did variations. They did some the same, some different, all kinds of fabrics. So if you want some inspiration, that's on our blog. But the pattern is free. You just need the paper because it's foundation paper. So I'm gonna show Lily's first. Oh my gosh, this is like her first really big quilt. Oh, it's amazing, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, oh my gosh. It's, it's big. It's oh, big. Oh, I'm so sorry, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's your fault, Lily, you made the quilt so I'm big. I'm sorry. So this is Lily's. Thank you. It's so awesome. And she told me not to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. But look at this. Oh, my gosh. I left the paper on, guys. I was trying to finish. So I think you should just have your boyfriend pull all the paper off. I agree. He yeah. said he would help me. Yeah, tell him I said it on the live stream. Okay, okay. I'm going to put it over here so I don't wrinkle up the paper. Yeah, to do it. Oh, my gosh, you're brave. <laughs> that's so heavy. It looks so good. Thank so you. So that's Tinkerville, right? That's Tinkerville. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And then I cheated. And I just made mine. Uh, 12 inch blocks and I use the sugar creek woven I believe it's coming out in the fall but I haven't worked with wovens in a really long time and I kind of just wanted to they're really pretty and I just kind of wanted to to see so I did that I'm gonna send this to the quilter today so excited I don't know how I'm gonna quilt it that's one thing that I got to figure out and then my backing I always do a fun backing so here's my backing. I think I might have already shown this. And that's just a six inch. Sorry, I keep hitting the microphone. It's okay. <laughs> I'm very sorry, I'm not used to it. Um, and so I just put a six inch block in the center 
and I'm going to send this to Gina Tell today, but I do need to figure out my quilting, and then I have my binding and my little tin. So that's what I've been sewing. I've also been sewing two other things. I sewed so much this weekend. So we're doing a perfect five sew along, and these are the two blocks I made last weekend. So what the perfect five sew along is going to be is we've got a book. It's an It's So Emma book, and it's using our new Perfect Five ruler that's coming out. And we do sew alongs with our books just so that if you like the quilts in the book, great. If you want more of a sampler-ish, which seems to be like the trend, we give you that free so that you can just make not just the books, not just the quilts in the book, but you can make a scrappier one. And then I got caught up on my So Colorful. So this is our club you get different colored fat quarters each month and we have a so colorful PDF pattern that Corey Yoder designed. So I did my yellows. So here's my yellows. I don't usually have too much yellow in my quilt. So I will say sewing with the yellows was a little bit harder for me. Um, sometimes when you don't you're not used to sewing with the color it can be harder to pick and then these are all my other ones that I've shown you before so I've got a big stack going of all my all my and then it's gonna be so big that I don't know what I'm gonna do I might just do a double-sided quilt I'm not really sure um, but I'm keeping up so the yellow is the June color and I just had a really tough time um, just because I'm not used to working with yellow sometimes, yeah. So there's that, so I'm super excited. I got June done, and it's June 27th, so I only have, I got it all done. Okay, so Winter Wonderland, I wanna show you this. This is a book by Sherry Falls. It is, let's see, let me look at when it came out. It's a couple years old, so let's look at the trademark, or the copyright. 2015, so this is four years old super cute book and when we sewed it it was i don't remember what fabric collection it was let's see if it says yeah i don't remember what fabric collection i'm gonna look and find out though so i have the answer okay. holly's tree farm by Sweetwater. So this fabric collection is older, but Pat Sloan emailed me earlier in the year and said, I really like this book. I want to do a sew along because I really like the book. What do you have that's similar? So her and Sarah colored it and she's, Pat Sloan is doing a sew along on her blog. And so this is the block one and this is block two and Teresa Williams from customer service sewed these for us and her seams. Oh my gosh. I'm going to show you guys her seams. She might not like that, but oh my gosh, look at that perfectness. So perfect. So if you want to do a sew along, it is on Pat Sloan's blog, and it's just all you would have to do is purchase this book. And let's see, she's we did a kit, and it uses Little Tree. So this is our kit. And inside the kit, we also give you like a picture of what it should look like so you know where to place it. And then if you have any any um, questions, you just go to Pat Sloan's blog. She's running it, it's totally her idea. She just wanted to do something fun and she came up with that. So that's totally awesome. Okay, let's see. We have got some new quilt kits. Oh, and here's the June bundle that went with the, with the spool blocks, spool blocks. So I didn't use some of these golder ones. I took some of the gold out because I wasn't really sure how to use them. So I took some of the gold out. So we have a new Picnic Patch quilt kit. It's, so this one is one that I really wanna make. It is a new It's So Emma pattern that I believe Sarah Price designed. We recolored it. We had originally done it in a different collection and we liked this, so we put it with this. And this is the new Bonnie and Camille Wovens and Sarah designed it and she pieced it. And it's just very scrappy. Or you know what, maybe this is the original quilt 
And then we did another kit that's coming later also with it because I think it's going to be super popular. Anything that we do ever that's just simple blocks or just simple layout or very scrappy or easy to pull from your stash at home, that's always sells better for us than something that's very specific. So, um, oh my gosh, it's so soft. So we have that and that is, um, we just got this in. So, sorry, <laughs> making a mess. And then we also have a North Northern Lights quilt kit. Here is, it is packaged up. It uses our Jolly Bars. And all of our Jolly Bars are five by 10 inch rectangles and they have a free pattern. So there's that. It's featuring Kate Spain's Aurora Christmas collection. And it has um, polar bears in it, I think, yeah. It's super cute. So that is a new kit. And Sue B made it. And I think that Crystal designed it. Pretty sure Crystal designed it. So that's new. And super exciting. We have new fashion stores. So we came out with fashion stores a couple years ago and they've been super popular and we decided to do mini fashion stores. And so we took a poll from our YouTube members and I am so excited that we did that because the number one request was purple. And this, you know, we, what we do is we pre-sell these through our distributors. So Checker, Moda, Brewer, they buy them in advance and they place orders as the quilt shops place orders. And purple is by far the best seller. And purple is the number one request that was in that group. So you guys know exactly what you're doing, but they're super cute. So I actually, Kevin got a navy one and then I got a pink one, a white one and two navies. And so they're at home and I'm like, I'm gonna like give them to my kids for their room. I just think they're super cute. So they are not on the site for sale exactly yet, but they will be later today. They, the shipment just arrived yesterday. And so when it arrives, we have to open everything, make sure there's no damages, count it all in, put it in inventory. Um, but I didn't want to not show you just because it's not live. So I'm cheating and showing you. So I decided to go out on a limb after last week when we showed you this kit, I couldn't resist. I was like, it's so cute, I have to do it. So I'm gonna tell you what I did. And um, hopefully it'll work for you guys. So what happens is it comes pre-packaged. So you get these little pre-packaged things that are already cut, that's half the work, right? So I starched them, me and my son Peyton starched them. These are the ones that I haven't done. Obviously, I'm only gonna do, what my goal is, is to do like 80 a week or something like that so that, so that um, I don't feel overwhelmed and don't rush. So if you just do a little bit each week, at the end, you're gonna have this gigantic quilt. So what I did, these are the ones that I did. I did a lot. I did 88 or something like that. So here's my little, my little blocks. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did. And if you wanna go out on a limb and do it the way I did it, just be careful. Cause I do crazy stuff in my sewing room. So what I did is first, let's talk about starch. So I wasn't able to find the original starch. I didn't realize at the time that they had the, comp the starch changed. So I bought some on Amazon because I couldn't find it at Costco or HEB or anywhere. And they sent me this firm, it's called firm. I think it's a little too firm, but I've already starched everything. So I'm gonna use those bottles, but I'm gonna go start looking and try to find one that is not firm because it's a little too stiff. But what I did was I took all of my pieces and starched them. Now this shrinks. So what I do is I let it dry and I cut it just like the pattern you have to cut on the diagonal a certain direction. And then also on this, you have to make sure all your fabric is face up because if it's face down, the it won't sew correctly and you'll have some blocks reverse. So you have to be very careful with that. And what I did was I used like an, a three eighths inch seam. I just used my quarter inch foot, but I didn't go to a quarter inch. I made a much, much smaller seam pressed and then trimmed down. And 
I was able to trim it down. Now you can see some, I still have a little bit of the little zigzag on the edge. And that is just because maybe my seam was too thick. So it seems like a lot of double work, but since it's starched, it's not really moving. And also I use the really stiff starch. So um, it's gonna be a stiff quilt. So I have got to figure out the starch situation because I'm out of my regular starch that I've used for like 15 years or whatever. So I'm on the search for a really nice starch that is not too stiff because it's just a little too stiff. I'm of course, when I finish this one, I'm gonna use all of that starch um, because I already started it. But it's really fun and I have not decided if I'm gonna make the quilt and the table runner or just the table runner. I do think I would probably start with the table runner because when you, when you do the table runner, um, I could play with getting the applique down the way that it's nice and looks good and then go to the quilt just so that I don't completely ruin. I'm not good at applique, so I don't wanna ruin the top. But I'm excited that I stepped out of the box and did this. Uh, and I did about 88. I think you needed to make like 430 or something. So I'm like a uh, little bit there. So I'll do a little bit more this weekend and then um, just do a little bit each week. And then my goal is to be done by August 31st, give myself the whole summer. Then that gives me plenty of time to get my quilt sewn together, get it to my quilter and then get it bound and have it done for Christmas. So um, that's awesome. Can you tell us what you're working on? I think there was just some confusion from uh, people who might not have watched last week. They don't know what this is. Okay, like. yes. Okay, so this is Sweet Christmas Quilt Kit. It comes from Moda. And when you open it, and I didn't know this when I opened it last week, I'll, not all, I don't have it on the website as pre-cut because not every single piece in this kit is pre-cut, but a lot of it is. So when I opened it last week on live stream, the fabric is pre-cut. So all you have to do is starch, cut, or you don't have to starch, you can just cut and sew for the blocks. And so let me show you, sorry, I, it comes with a panel on the inside. Okay. I'll show you. So this is the pattern and there is a kit on the front and it's just using these half rectangle units and it comes with a block lock ruler to trim down and that's why I said if you if you used a full quarter inch seam, you would not have enough to trim down. And on the back is a table runner pattern. Yeah, I know, cute, right? And it's got a little line on the center. And so this little snowman is part of the panel. And so what I was saying was I would love to do the table runner first and then practice getting this down and then go here and put this big guy down so that I have, I'd rather mess up a table runner than a quilt and it comes with this panel and if you see the panel so there's a big panel this is the big piece that goes on the quilt this is a little guy who goes on the table runner and this is a quilt label that you can put on the back so i don't know i just um literally thought oh this will be cute and fun and i don't know i think the colors are really cute i am nervous about the applique panel just because i um, I'm not great at that, but they do give you some tips on how, I'll show you this part. They give you some tips on um, like cutting in different sections and then when you turn it over, it will curve better. So I think that that's gonna really help me by looking at the diagram that's in there because it gives you, it gives you um, examples of where you would cut little slits. So this is totally going out on a limb for me. This is totally, um, I don't usually do half rectangle blocks and I usually don't do applique, but it's sometimes things are just too cute and you're just like, oh, I gotta do it. Also, could you clarify the seam? I think you might've said three eighth inch seam. Um, I meant, I yeah, I meant like an eighth, between an eighth and a quarter. Okay, perfect. Sorry. Are, no, three eighths is bigger than a quarter, sorry. Um, yeah, so basically what I did was I took my quarter inch foot, I left it on, and when I sewed, I just left a little tiny bit and I tested. I did like, I did a block, 
pressed, trimmed down, did it a couple times, really got the rhythm of what I thought would work and how much, and it just kind of was playing with it. Um, but if you don't starch, you don't have to worry about that at all. I just starch. Um, but I do wish I would have tested my starch a little bit because it is, when it says it's stiff, it's stiff. The problem is at our local HEB, that's the only one they're offering. They don't have, it's faultless, which is what I've always used. There's not like a regular one. So um, I'm gonna have to just go around. Um, Randall's doesn't usually have it, or the Randall's at my old house did. Anyway, I know where all the starch is everywhere in town. So I'm gonna have to really just take some, some trips um, because the starch that I used is not, um, it's too stiff. And uh, I can't do that too much. So we have some new videos by Mr. Domestic who is in our live chat. Thank you so much. So the videos that we have, this is a little pillow. We came out with three videos, right? Yes. So the first one is intro to fabric weaving. And so fabric weaving, I didn't even know what it was when he came. I know that's horrible. Sorry, Matthew. I didn't know what it is, what it was, but it's basically folding over fabric on the back and you don't even have to sew it and there's a tool there's some tools you can use that he talks about like the wefty needle in the video and you weave it and so he shows you how to make this pillow how to do just basic fabric weaving and then how to do a triaxial weave which is that? oh which is this sorry so this is the triaxial weave and then the regular weave we showed you i think on two live streams ago so um, three new videos for him, so we're super grateful. Thank you for showing us. And I think it's great because it's totally different. Um, it's totally, um, when I think about Matthew and his style and his aesthetic and why he's successful is number one, because he's positive. Number two, he has original content. And number three, he's really mixing sewing with quilting. So you can really tell that he's really a sewer who wants to quilt but doesn't want to take that step to be like, I'm going to do sampler quilts and I'm going to do quilts to have half square triangles and flying geese and all that. So he's figuring out a way to make quilts with his sewing techniques so that he can keep it his own style. So we've got that. We also have this other thing that I'm going to talk about. Uh, and um, y'all might not like it. Sorry. So we got this group in called All Hallows Eve. We have a book called Witches Night Out, and it's a wonderful quilt and a wonderful book that Sarah Price designed for us. I'm gonna flip through it a little bit. And it is in a nice spiral bound. And so we sold out of the kits. So there's no more kits, I'm very sorry. We ordered a ton and they are shipping today. No, they're shipping tomorrow, because we are cutting them. We got the fabric on Monday, so we have to cut all the fabric. So we have this book and we also have this kit that Moda came out with. And I love their kits because they come in these really nice boxes. So this is their kit. It comes with a cute little ruler. The pattern, the pattern is designed by Fig Tree and it has all the fabric to make it. So we do have, I wanted to show you that we do still have this kit. show you this so we have this kit we have her new Halloween figs pattern the block of the month is also sold out the fat quarter bundle is also sold out and the background fabric is also sold out and uh, I'm really sorry we ordered so much of the fabric and uh, we ordered more than what we usually do and we still sold out so I'm just gonna apologize for selling out and just be really honest about that. Um, it just really is popular. So, but we do have some, and then we have the little, we thought we would show you this because honey buns were a thing about five or six years ago where Moda made them with every single collection and then they pulled back because they weren't selling as well. Well, I'm assuming that's why they pulled that back. And then we had customers start requesting and then I guess Moda had people requesting, so they started bringing them back, and I think this is really nice. And also, um, I wanted to thank you guys. We have made so much money for Make-A-Wish. We auctioned off Pat Sloan and Corey Yoder's quilts for over like $1,200,
and we are now with Kevin and I and Mark Dunn's contribution, $43,085.96 directly to make a wish. We are so excited about that. Um, and um, you know what? One thing I forgot to talk about is, can you show those 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 pictures of my star chain? Oh, I didn't have them loaded. Okay, no, it's okay. We can come back to them. Um, I was going to show you pictures of how I starched, um, and then next week we have a special guest. So next week I am traveling to Branson, Missouri, for a dance competition. So I can't do a live stream, but um, there's a couple of things that you guys have really wanted to do, and I think I'm just too nervous or too scared to do them. One of them is tips on borders and one of them is how to piece backings and the the backings is just like I feel overwhelmed by the math and I feel like I'm gonna confuse all of you so Gina Tell who is a long arm quilter her business name is graffiti thread graffiti, thread graffiti sorry she is local to us and she um, is getting a lot of you guys quilts so I thought it would be great to um, have her come in. She's gonna do a tutorial on just how she puts borders on, talk a little bit about how, there's one little thing that I do different that she might talk about, she might not, um, and just walk you through all the steps for figuring out how to put the borders on. She's gonna actually measure, put it on, stitch it and iron it. I mean, not a whole quilt, but just to give you tips, like a learning, um, like a learning thing and then she's going to be able to answer all your questions and i think it's better for her to do it honestly because she's a long arm quilter so when she gets quilts if the edges are not um, square or something i'm sure she would know better than me tips on that um if you have questions on mitered borders i have a video on that that is really good um, on our channel but so she's going to be here next friday and i don't know if i'll be in the chat or not i'll try to be my daughter is obviously competing some dances. I haven't even, honestly, I haven't even looked at the schedule. I just know when her solo is, and her solo is July 4th, and um, that's what I know. And I'm super thankful that Gina's gonna come in so that we have, we have something for you guys. So that's 30 minutes of me just talking a lot. Um, so I'll answer any questions now. I'm so sorry that I'm just like, la, la, la. Uh, first of all, we had uh, several people asking if the starch you use is the one with the gold cap, the faultless with the gold cap. So what happened is faultless, I don't know what color cap it is. Um, and the reason I didn't bring it is because I don't want to recommend it because it's too strong. Faultless apparently got bought by another company and it says on their firm. It's too firm, it's too thick, it's too, it's too crunchy, it's too much. So I will be showing you what works when I figure that out because I'm now on the hunt for the perfect starch. Okay. Uh, we had a few people saying that they found the starch that they've seen in your previous videos uh, on, at Walmart and at Target. I don't know. If yeah, I'm going to go that. look. I'm going to go buy whatever I can. We have been looking. Um, my nanny has also been looking um, because I couldn't find it. So, um, yeah, but they discontinued it. They discontinued the one that I used to use and replaced it. And I haven't found the exact replacement yet. Uh, and we had a couple of questions about the Mary Mini Quilt. The first okay. one was from Hannah Wetterstrom. She says, uh, does it use a whole layer cake no. or is there a lot left over? Okay, so you need 19 10 inch squares. That's exactly what you need. And then one and a half yards background, half yard binding, and the quilt is 33 and a half inches square. Um, and around the same lines, uh, Leigh Ann Humphrey was asking what a jolly bar work for the mini quilt. Um, uh, we can go ask real quick. Uh, it looks like it will for the finishing but I don't have the block patterns here so we're gonna get that answer for you because I'm really sorry I don't off the top of my head I don't know I think one of the pieces might be bigger than five inches so I'm not sure so we're gonna check on that and get back to you uh, crystal longar was asking what color thread would you suggest for the applique on goodness grows block number two I couldn't find a matching pink on the FQS website so we did a thread pack and so I would just search Google I mean 
search goodness grows thread pack and then just look at the color numbers listed and one of those matches. It's not an exact match, but when I made it and put the stitches on it, you couldn't tell. And I mean, I just don't remember that off the top of my head, but it should be on our site. Yeah, it is. I looked for it the other day. Okay, good. Um, okay, okay, Jolly Bar won't work. Jolly Bar will not work. Sorry. For the Merry Mini. Uh, Mandalie Demke says, uh, she was asking about the stash in store. What is it and what is it for? Okay, I'll show you. So you can use it as, I use it in my office. Thank you. I use it actually in my office for all my pens, pencils, and highlighters. But I also use it in my sewing room. So you can put your scissors. You can just put like things in it and it just, sorry, I pulled that out. Yeah, you can just, and you can change it. There's little holes. So there's bigger holes, smaller holes, and you can just kind of, uh, you can also use it, my daughter uses it for makeup brushes. So, so we kind of have them. And um, you can do either, like if you're gonna do your seam ripper, um, you can do it, it holds better this way, but I tend to put it this way so that my kids don't, like, I mean, I don't want somebody to just like walk by and like poke themselves. So, it's cute. They're just little holders, and we just made more because people kept asking. So, we try to do as much as we can for what you guys ask for. I mean, sometimes we just can't because. Uh, I think one of my favorite comments this week is from Teresa. She said, do I see starch and fat quarter shops feature products? Oh my gosh, probably not. I don't even know. That's like a chemical. So when you, I mean, I wish, because I, I was like so, I just really didn't know what to do on Saturday because I'm so used to, like I've said in other live streams, like I'm not really good with change. And it just was so stiff and it, it almost like foamed up. And then I could like, I don't know, it's just too much. So um, I want my old starch back. We have another super chat. Uh, $9.99 oh my from goodness. Sonia Rosamond. I think that's our biggest super chat ever. Oh my so gosh. She says, thanks for all y'all do. Thank so, you. Oh my confetti gosh. Confetti Cannon for Sonia. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's a big help. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, and then uh, Terry Zachary was asking, how wide are the honey buns? One and a half inches. And I do know that Fig Tree has some honey bun patterns, and there's someone else that has some cute honey bun patterns. Uh, and along I think, oh wait, it's, um, okay, Bonnie and Camille, Cotton Way, and Fig Tree have really cute honey bun patterns. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, along the same lines, what is that thing hanging behind you? Oh, I'm sorry. This is a cute little banner that we made with honey buns. And it's a cute little tutorial that we did on our blog. And um, you can do it on a rope or you could do it on a wreath. It's just a cute like decoration. And since um, we all love this fabric, we used it. What's the fabric collection? Ho all Hollows Eve. And yes, that's the one that we have sold out of the bundles, the kits, the block of the month. But we do have honey buns. Cause, Cause I mean, honestly, like I feel really bad because we do try to look at every single SKU. We try to order enough. We always order a ton of background, like a ton. I can't even tell you how I wanted to cry when we sold out. All right. And then uh, Diane Erdwin was asking, why do you feel it's important to starch first? Does it really make a difference? So for me, it does. And I love to starch because I get more accurate points and it does take longer because I have to take that time to starch, but it's easier to iron. It's easier to press. My bias seams don't stretch as much. I just love the results I get and I've been doing it for so long. And so that's why I was like so devastated when the starch, I just figured, oh, I'll just use the starch. I wasn't really thinking about this could be a really different product. And then when I went back, like I always do it at night and let it sit overnight. And so when I went back in the morning and like picked them up, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like paper. 
it was just too stiff and so but i am on the hunt to figure out what to do because i have to have the perfect starch because the heavy starch is just not gonna i mean i'm gonna finish it for my quilts that i've started because i did a couple just so that they're all consistent but like long term i do have to have a better better system for but i love to starch love it i don't do anything without starch that's why i'm saying like i did a shorter seam because i would rather have a smaller seam and be able to trim down than to not starch and i also one thing that i do is i i sew really fast so when i go i hit the pedal and i my machine i use a juki and it's like the fastest machine that i know of pedal to the metal. yes and so when i sew fast of course your fabric is going to move more and stretch more so because of that starch really helps it just stay right where it needs to be Pat Pro was asking, will you please make log cabin paper soon? Pretty please. I love using these papers. And then she put a little heart. Oh, okay. We will tell Jocelyn. I've never done log cabin on a paper, but we can look into that. And then Teresa was saying, any chance you will make triangles on a roll for jelly rolls? That's on the list too. It's already on the list. Okay, uh, Donna Kirkland was asking, has Kimberly tried Best Press? If yes, what is her feedback regarding this product? Too soft, too hard? Too soft. Too light. And also, like, it's not aerosol. And when I go, I mean, I just have to have the aerosol. I'll use a whole can in, like, 10 minutes. So, yeah. And Carla Nat, I hope I said your last name right, uh, she said, we still have the faultless starch. I will send it to Kimberly if she wants. No, don't. I will feel guilty. Like, I don't want anybody to send me anything, but if it shows up, I will cry. <laughs> but no, I don't want anybody, I don't ever want to feel like anybody needs to send me anything. But I am, I, I did want to cry. And even my son who helps me was, because he, he basically will lay the fabric out, but then he'll pick it up. And then he doesn't just pick it up. He'll put it in stacks. For me, he'll put all the colors together. He loves doing it. It's like, I don't know, it's like a game to him. He loves it. And he even was like, what? This is weird. It doesn't feel right. And then that was when I was like, oh, we have a problem. Um, so I didn't bring the can because I don't want to show you something. I don't want you to buy something and say, oh, Kimberly bought it. It sucks. Uh, it's just too stiff. So I have, I just, I'm going to have to figure it out. I should just shut up about it now. Um, Wanda Rayfield says, why is this called Pineapple Day? Oh, so the Pineapple Day quilt is called Pineapple Day because we started it and launched the program on National Pineapple Day, right? I think Something it's like that. Yeah, I think it like either ended it was or one of the days in the so long. Yeah, yeah. what it had something to do with, yeah. Yeah, so we lined our pineapple paper up with the Pineapple Day. Yes. So. Um. Terry Zachary says, have you done a tutorial on the garland behind you? On the block. It's on the block. And let's see. Oh, Gianna Gorsuch says, Pat Sloan is hosting a witch's night out sew along. Is FQS separately hosting a sew along for this quilt? <clears throat> so we're not, but we have a bundle that Pat Sloan put together. She curated it and it is a combination of fabrics from Moda and Riley Blake mostly, and then a couple of other manufacturers, but mostly Moda and Riley Blake, and it's just a starter bundle. So you would just find the background and how much you need, and then you would just buy the bundle, and then that gets you started, and then Pat's gonna show you where she puts all her fabric as she goes, because she's got the same bundle. Okay, okay, my bad. Today is National Pineapple Day. There were a few people in the comments okay. saying today is so Pineapple Day. So I think it's day. because it ends on that day or we, yeah, yeah something, because I guess I thought we started on it, but yes, it does. We do quirky things around here, but they do mean things. It's just when we plan them, like we plan our stuff literally four months in advance. So I can't remember what I did four months ago. Maria Morrow says, which wool pressing mat is your favorite? There are several brands now. So I am going to be frank and honest. I don't use one. And I don't use one because I don't like the smell. I just don't use it. Some people love them and some people hate them. But I would say most people love them. They're one of our best-selling products. Um, I think they were created for applique maybe um but they're supposed to make your blocks flatter 
You could go in Kimberly Stitch Squad and ask for feedback. I just don't use them, but I'm also, like I've said, I don't like change. What I have works. If I have something that works, I don't usually change because why change if it works? Um, I did try it, but it's not my thing. It's not my jam. So I can't recommend a brand or anything because I don't use them. Okay. Um, and then another one of my favorite comments uh, from Need a Break. She says, sometimes I'm relieved when y'all sell out because I don't have to try and control myself. LOL. I know. I feel like I feel like right now so much product is coming out and a lot of it is because we tend to buy more Christmas and so like all the Christmas is out and it's like oh my goodness we have so much stuff um yeah I will say the manufacturers have really pulled back on their Halloween and their Valentine groups and so that kind of stinks because I love seeing those but now it's just like it seems to be the theme is like Christmas 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 Okay, Michigan, Michigan Gal 001 was saying, can anybody tell me where they purchased a drying rack for starched pieces to dry? I bought it on Amazon. We can link it. Um, but I bought a ginormous, it folds down. So the one that I have, so like, a, say this is the center, it has pieces that fold. It has, this is like, if it's, if it's folded down, it looks like this. But then it has a piece that pops up, and then it locks in place, and then it has a piece that folds up, locks in place. So you could use just half of it or all of it. And then when my in-laws come, cause I keep it in the shower they use, I just pop it down and then just put it in my closet. Um, back on the starch subject, <laughs> Jana Edwards said the fault list website is now listing two different firm starches, but they also list a flexible one. Maybe the flexible one works more like the old one. Yeah. So I basically am just going to go, I couldn't find a place. Well, when I bought it online, I bought it and thought I was getting the old product and got a different one. So I think I just need to go to a couple of stores and just get a bunch and try it. But, um, I just wasn't I just wasn't prepared. I think for. I feel like we could do like a cool science experiment. Like you wear yes. a lab coat, and then it's like, okay, we're gonna test yes. five different starches. Yes. That would be fun. Yes, I might have to go to a different brand. I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I I, I gotta get back to zero. Uh, Susan Chance says so. Off topic. Your nails are always perfect. Are they gel, acrylic, or what? Oh, they're gel. So I do my nails about every eight days. I try to go as long as I can without getting them done. Um, but I use usually Cajun shrimp or um, there's another color I use. I can never remember the name, but um, gel. And I keep them short. Like when I go, they're always, I'm always like cut them, cut them, cut them because they grow really fast. Uh, Debbie Bill says, will you be doing a tutorial on the 12 inch pineapple paper piecing? No, but it's pretty much the same exact technique as the six inch, which we've done two videos on that. One was in a live stream and one was more of just a Denise did. She it was her hands. Most beautiful hands in the world. Yes, yeah, she gets a lot of comments on her hands. Yeah, but it really is. It's the exact same exact thing. technique. It's just bigger sizes. Okay, that's all the questions So that's all we have. So just uh, thanks for joining me. Have a great weekend and make sure to come back next Friday so that you can ask questions to Gina Tell on Borders. And I think that her techniques are going to really help you with all your quilts. And thanks for joining me. I truly, truly appreciate it.